All right. I think we're going to get started. Um, welcome to Burfish and Buddies. Uh, my name is Erin Moran, and I'm the public programs intern for UGA Marine Extension and Georgia Sea Grant. As an organization, we conduct research, education, and outreach, outreach for healthy coastal ecosystems and communities. Uh, just a few Zoom tips before we get started. Um, this is a webinar, so your video and your microphone are off and uh, we'll be taking questions throughout the program. So you can add those in the Q&A box or the chat box and I'll relay them to Melissa um, when there's time. Uh, without being, with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Melissa to get started. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Melissa and I am a Marine Education Fellow here at the UGA Marine Education Center and Aquarium. Um, today, we're going to be going over lots of things like birdfish and their buddies. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to do a little introduction. If you have not visited us, he visit us, us here before, uh, we are coming to you from Skidaway Island. I am about a little south of Savannah, Georgia, but we are on an inner barrier island where our aquarium sits. and. We were the very first saltwater aquarium in the state of Georgia. We've been open for 50 years as of 2020, and we do a lot of education and outreach here, such as today's virtual public program. So today we're gonna start out with a little introduction to fish shapes. We're gonna look at some preserved or dry buddies, and then we're gonna look at some live buddies in these tanks behind me, as well as some recordings that I've taken. And then at the very end, we're going to do some fun arts and crafts so you can make your own bird fish and buddies. And with that, Erin, you can go to our next slide. So just a little introduction to fish shapes. There are lots of different types of fish out there and they come in a variety of shapes as seen in the PowerPoint. As you can see, fusiform is the very first one. And the way we kind of figure out what to call them or the shapes is, is looking at the fish head on, um, which is why you can see little eyes and smiley face as an example. So that very first one you see is called fusiform, um, which is just the normal oval body shape. Um, the second one is called depressiform. So those are things that kind of look like they're flattened. Um, so anything like a stingray or anything like a flatfish, a halibut or a dab would be considered a depressor form. Things like compressiform, it lo looks like their faces are compressed or squished together. Um, and that's where they get their name. And then globiform means that instead of being an oval shape, they're gonna be one big round shape. And I am going to show you an example of a globiform, which is why we, I didn't put the photo of that there. Um, so if Aaron, you could let me show our globiform example on camera. So as you can see, it's got a big round body, but with that, if Aaron, you can launch our very first poll question. And my poll question is, what do you call these kinds of fish? Got a few options. You can select more than one. And I'm not asking for the specific type of fish, just what you would call these types of fish in general. And I think Aaron will give you all a minute to answer that. Yep, we'll just give it a little, like 10 more seconds so everyone can answer. All right, three, two, one. I'm gonna end the poll. So a lot of people said a lot of the answers, uh, but the biggest answer people were saying was a puffer fish. <laughs> That's right. So things like puffer fish are perfect examples of fish that have that globiform shape. Um, I like to call them fishy puffer uppers because I think it's really cute. Um, things like puffer fish, as you know, do puff up. They will puff up with either air or water. What I'm holding in my hand is specifically a porcupine fish. Um, it is a specific type of fish and things like puffer fish or porcupine fish, they're not always going to be puffed up, um, even though they look really funny like this. They're really only going to puff up if they're stressed or under attack. And they do that as a form of defense. Um, so as you can see, it's got some sharp spines. I do want to hold it carefully um, because the spines help it keep those predators away. The spines would want, not want 
um, the predators to be able to eat them. Um, I wouldn't want to take a bite out of something that is spiny and neither do things like sharks or larger fish. Um, but besides just the spikes, you can see that it increases its size. And so maybe the fish looks a little bigger to the predatory fish or shark and it might not want to take a bite out of it. Um, and you might have heard that puffer fish or porcupine fish um, are poisonous. Uh, does anyone know the difference between poison, being poisonous and being venomous? How we tell the difference between that? In the chat box, if you wanna let us know what the difference is between poisonous and venomous. I have named this porcupine fish, Mr. Puff. Is he poisonous or venomous? I'm waiting for a few more responses, so I'll just give them a, a couple more seconds. All right, so some people were saying the differences were just different reactions. Um, and then someone also said that they guessed that he, um, Mr. What'd you name him? <laughs> he was um, poisonous. <laughs> So Mr. Puffy is poisonous. Uh, so that main difference between poisonous and venomous is that poison is something you have to consume. So oftentimes some types of puffers that are called fubu um, are, or fubu are a type of delicacy in some countries. However, if you do eat it, it's poison. Um, can potentially harm you, humans, or other animals that consume it. So the poison needs to be consumed. Whereas venom, maybe you might think of venomous snakes, you need to be bit um, or touch that venom. Um, so things like snakes, if you get bit by one, maybe a rattlesnake, it'll the bite will transfer that venom into you. And so that is the difference, is that for venom, you need to be bit or touch it, whereas the poison in things like a puffer fish or fugu, it needs to be consumed. Um, so that is the main difference. And what's also interesting about some puffer fish and porcupine fish is that the poison is made in their organs and it's called tetradoxin. And so it can release it, it can, it doesn't release it the way something like a snake does, but it has to be consumed. Um, and sometimes that poison that we call tetradoxin, it can even be stronger than cyanide, which is another really scary poison that you don't want to consume. Um, and these are the different ways that pufferfish and porcupine fish are able to defend themselves against predators. And with that, we're going to move on to our next buddy, our little preserved buddy. Can anyone guess and tell me what this fish might be? Here, I'll do a side view. So this is the view from the side. And in the front, you can see it has the two little horns right there. And this shape, this fish shape, we're gonna go over that again. This one is called compressiform because it looks like its face has been compressed together. Erin, do we have any guesses as to what type of fish this might be? Yeah, we have a few guesses. So some people said a horned fish. Some people said a cowfish. Um, yeah, those are the majority of the guesses. <laughs> so whoever's the cowfish is correct. These are um, longhorn cowfish. And I have another longhorn cowfish, but it's just a tiny, small baby version of it still equally as cute with that compressiform shape. And that was a great guess. Um, these long, longhorn cowfish aren't exactly local. They're more found in coral reefs along the Indo-Pacific region. And they can range anywhere from four to 40 inches long when they are full grown. And the reason why they have these horns that kind of makes them look like cows because cow cows can have horns, is that the horns are also made to protect itself, just like a puffer or a porcupine fish, instead of having spikes, it's gonna have this, these horns at the top of its head, um, so that it's also more maybe difficult for those predators, like larger fish or sharks to eat. So this will hopefully deter um, any predation on them. 
And if the horns do get damaged, they can actually grow back within a few months. These long horn cowfish are omnivores, so they can eat things like algae, worms. Um, they also have beaks. Um, it's a little hard to see with our dried buddy, but it's got a little very small dried beak, so it can eat some of the algae off the rocks, but they'll also eat small crustaceans. They have that beak that helps them crush things like crustaceans or things with hard shells. Um, and what's really cool about these long horn cowfish is that when they swim, I don't know if you can see, but they have this very flat bottom. So when they swim, it kind of just looks like they're hovering, kind of looks like they're hovering in the water because their fins will move for them to help them swim. But because their bottom is flat, they don't have to really move side to side. They kind of just look like they're hovering across the water. And with that, we have one more of our preserved or dry buddy. This one is going to be a little hard to see because it's a little thinner. But does anyone want to take a guess as to what type of animal or what type of fish this is? And this is a little sneak preview because I do have uh, video footage of me feeding these fish later on in our program. All right, we got a few guesses. Some people were saying an eel, a snakefish, um, a pipefish. Those are those the are, guesses. All right, well, those are all really great guesses. Um, it does kind of look like a really small eel, um, but whoever said um, file, filefish or pipefish, um, the pipefish is the correct answer because they kind of look like really small um, pipe cleaners is what I like to say they look like. And their body shape is going to be called filiform. And that's because if you were to look at it straight on, um, all you would see is its mouth. It's a little hard to focus, but all you would see is this little dot. And if you just see that little dot head on, that's what we call filiform. And the pipefish are pretty cool. Um, they have small mouths and they don't have any teeth. And their dorsal fins, which are these dried fins right here, when they're swimming, they kind of flutter. So they look really pretty when they're swimming. Um, and these can grow up to 15 inches long. This one isn't quite, I don't think it's quite that size yet, but, but it is full grown. And again, I will show you some video footage that I have taken of our live pipefish. And with that, if Aaron, we, if we could transition back to the PowerPoint for just a minute. And along with those spines that we talked about, um, so what I'm showing you now is another type of puffer fish. This one is called a northern puffer. But as you can see, it doesn't have those spines. Um, when it's deflated, it's pretty flat across the whole body. And when it does inflate, it'll have those little spines um, and it can grow about twice the size vertically so that they look taller. And that's again to scare predators like larger fish or sharks so that they don't want to eat them. Um, and they also have beaks um, that help them crush things. Uh, you can see their tail in their photo. Um, and then the two fins that are next to the tail, the one on top, that's what we call the dorsal fin. And the one at the bottom is called the anal fin. So those are gonna be fins that we'll be seeing again and again in these different fish. Um, and now I will show you a video of a Northern puffer that we now have. So this is just a little video I took. Um, we do have a special scientific collections permit that allows our institution to be able to collect um, organisms. We got this northern puffer by trawling in our Wausau Sound. As you can see it's swimming a little. They have really beautiful fins that flutter. But it's pretty shy. It's in one of our quarantine, quarantine tanks right now, which is where all our fish go before they are ready to be out on display. And we just wanna make sure that the fish that we have don't have any internal or external parasites. We wanna make sure they can get along with some of our other fish before we put them in the aquariums. So I'm pretty excited that we, we will now have a Northern puffer on exhibit, hopefully in the next few weeks or months. And with that, Aaron, if you could launch our second poll question. 
So now I am going to start showing you some of our lucky buddies. And our second poll question is going to be, what kind of fish do you see swimming in this tank? There's one right there. And then we have a total of three of these mystery fish swimming in the tank. You can see one swimming in the back. And I think the third one is hiding in the bottom corner, but there is that pretty active one up here. Oh, now you can see all three on screen, two are swimming in the back. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds just so the last people can answer. So the majority said a striped burfish. Yes, that is right. So none of you were tricked um, by my first answer, which was Northern Puffer, because I all showed you that video. So thank you so much for paying attention. And these are in fact striped burfish. They're pretty cute. Uh, I'm glad they're all on camera. Now they're my favorite fish in our aquarium because they have really big eyes and a big mouth. And I just think they're the cutest things. Um, but our burfish, we also got through trawling in the Wausau Sound. And these burfish can grow up to about 10 inches long. I believe our burfish are just about that length. So they are full grown and they can feed on invertebrates like small crabs and even barnacles because they have um, beak-like jaws. Their mouths don't look exactly like the northern puffer or the porcupine fish I showed you earlier that have those beaks, um, but their mouths are strong enough to break open those hard shells of invertebrates. And they can be found in seagrass beds, coastal lagoons, and our estuaries. And I know they're a little hard to see with the lighting, so we'll just look at them for a few more seconds before I move on to the recordings I took of them so you can get a better look at them. You can see their, their tail. Again, that's going to be the anal fin you see. All right, Erin, let's go back to our PowerPoint. All right, so now we can look at our burfish a little more up close. So as you can see, they have those stripes. Some of them have more polka dots than others, but you can get a better look at their big eyes and that big mouth they have. One more time. Does anyone have any observations that they're noticing about the burfish that maybe are different from the northern puffer or the porcupine fish I showed you early? Erin, do we have any responses? Yeah, so some people are saying permanent spikes, spiky all over, bigger spikes, and then darker. So those are exactly right. They do have those permanent spikes, whereas things like the northern puffer that you saw, it didn't really have any spikes. It really only has spikes when they puff up. But these burfish do have permanent spikes at all times. Um, and burfish are not the same as pufferfish. They are related, but they're not exactly the same. The spikes that you see on pufferfish are modified scales, um, whereas the burfish, they have these permanent spikes, um, even when they're not puffed up, because they do have that ability to puff up, just like pufferfish and porcupine fish do. But now I want to show you a little bit of what they look like when they're feeding. So all of our animals here get a mix of fish and shrimp that we also trawl for and something called gel food. We will make our own food made of fish meal and gelatin. So it's kind of like fishy jello um, with some vitamins just to make sure they're getting all the proper nutrients. But as you can see, that food is kind of falling on the sediment of their tank and they will eat it off, um, off the floor and not eat the sediment. So sometimes we'll see our fish kind of chewing through that sediment and then spitting it out um, just to make sure that they're getting the food. They will not be swallowing that sediment. 
But besides feeding on the floor, like you see here in the video, they'll also swim um, towards the top of the tank when that food is still at the top and go after the food. But it's cool to see that they like to really eat either, it doesn't matter if it's at the bottom or the top of the tank. And with that, like I said, they are similar to puffer fish that they can puff up. So if we go to our next video, I did, I've only seen them puff up once. Um, I'm not sure why it was stressed, but sometimes that does happen in captivity. With fish, you can see really only its belly has expanded and it's filled its belly with water. And if you could just play that one more time, <laughs> I've only seen this happen once, and this was a few weeks ago, so I made sure to take a recording because it's not something that, I, that I'm able to see very frequently here at our aquarium. And it was only one of them out of the three burfish that was puffed up, but that is what they look like when they puff up. And now with that, um, now that we've learned a little bit more about the striped puffer fish, um, we're going to learn about other fish that are sort of related, distantly related. Um, so things like puffer fish, burfish, porcupine fish, they're all in this order that we call tetra, tetradontiforms. And as you can see, this is the breakdown of the classification of the burfish. You might be fam familiar with things like kingdom. So we are all part of that kingdom, animalia, because we're all animals. We're also all in that same um, classification called phylum, which is the next one, because we all have backbones. If you want to feel your backbone, that makes us... Um, chordata or chordates, um, but I really wanted to highlight the order, um, which is tetradontoforms, because there's so many different fish that fit that same order, such as the ocean sunfish or the mola mola that you see the little gif I have from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, that fin you see swimming at the top is going to be the dorsal fin, so that's the one that's kind of flapping up here, and the one below it that's flapping is the anal fin. And so those two fins that are flop, flopping back and forth, um, that's a really big identi identifier for fish that are in that order, tetradontoform. And so with that, we are now going to show you some other fish in our aquarium that are also in that same order that we call tetradontoforms. So I'll try and not be too shaky. I don't want to make anyone seasick as we move to our first tetradontoform. But with that, Aaron, if you want to launch our next poll question regarding tetradontoforms. Yes. So I already gave one away. Yep, so this question is, what other animals belong in that same order as the striped burfish? And the choices are plain head, filefish, and mola mola, a triggerfish, or a cowfish. We'll give you a few more seconds so everyone can answer. I see everyone's using your hint, Melissa. <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give it like two more seconds and then I'm gonna end the poll. All right. So everyone guessed um, ocean sunfish mola mola correctly, but in fact, all of the fish that I named are part of that same order of tetradontoforms. So that first one that you see, the plain head file fish, is one I'm now going to show you in this tank. Oh, it just swam to the bottom and back out. Oh, it's hiding in the corner. Let's see if I can get him, get him to come out a little. Hello. It looks like he is busy eating algae off the rocks. Um, just like some of our other fish, um, it does have a small mouth that lets it eat algae off the rocks. Since it's hiding, oh, now it's come out. It's right there. So now you can see those, that dorsal fin and that anal fin kind of both swimming together like the ocean sunfish. It doesn't flap as much as the ocean sunfish or our burfish, but you can definitely see that top and bottom fin near the tail. And that's why it's part of the order tetradontoforms. 
that's just checking us out a little. But we have a larger version of the plainhead filefish in this tank. You can see it also in that right corner, also trying to eat algae off the rocks, checking out some of the sediment, but that's a bigger version of the plainhead filefish. And they can grow to be up to about 11 inches long. And once again, they also have a compressed body shape, just like the cowfish I showed you. Because when you look at it head on like that, it just looks very thin and like its head has been squished. And with that, we're going to show you our very last tetradontiform cousin or family member. He's right here at the bottom of this tank. Hello. So this is our gray trigger fish. And unlike the file fish that eats algae, um, this one has teeth. <laughs> oh, you can really see its fins flapping. I really got its attention. But it's very curious. It's also very brave <laughs> because it has teeth. And these can grow up to about 28 inches long. Ours is pretty big. Um, they can also weigh up to 13 pounds. And the males tend to be larger than the females. Ours is pretty large. And again, they have that same compressive form body shape, where if you look at it from head on, it looks like someone squished its face from side to side. And now it's back to hiding in the corner. But go ahead if you have any questions about the fish I just showed you, our tetradontiforms, so things like the file fish or the trigger fish or the burr fish. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat and Aaron will let me know. Let's see if I can get him to swim back to the front. Hello. He's looking at me. All right, we have a, a couple questions. Um, how long do they live? So I'm really not sure how long our trigger, our the trigger fish lives. Um, it really depends on how much space um, or availability to food they have in the wild. In our aquarium, we've had him for a number of years. Um, and I believe we also traded him from another aquarium, which is another way we get our animals. So, but I hope he lives a very long and happy life here. I know he's some of our educators' favorite fish here. The kids really love him because he'll come swim up right to the tank. Yeah, that was our second question. If, if, um, they like to come up to the, the front of the tank often. Well, the trigger fish does because um, I think it's pretty brave um, because it has those teeth so it knows um, it can kind of defend itself against other predators or other fish. It often will chase some of the other fish in this tank or the sea turtle you see swim by. Our sea turtle and trigger fish kind of have this love-hate relationship. Um, they'll chase each other around. But the trigger fish is very curious. As soon as you go to the back of the tank, as we're ready to feed it, it comes up just like the burr fish. Um, fish in that order of tetradontiforms, they tend to be pretty charismatic. Um, they're always really interested in what we're doing and wondering when, when they're going to get fed. And now with that, if Aaron, if we could go back to our PowerPoint. And we're gonna see just a few more videos of some buddies. And these ones are, can anyone tell me what these ones are? <laughs> so we have two different types, that might've been a hint. There's two different types of fish on the screen. We have an alarming response of seahorse and sea dragons. <laughs> Those are both correct. The one at the top is going to be the sea dragon and the one on the bottom is the seahorses. 
And those ones are going to be related to things like the pipefish that I showed you earlier. Um, and they have elongated bodies with a little long snout and they have really small mouths. And because they have such small mouths, um, they have to eat really small things. So if we go to the next slide, I do have videos of me feeding them. So here I am putting in some very small krill and shrimp that we defrosted. And you can see they're really tiny. So I think we have about four of pipefish. And the one that you saw, um, the one that's really small, that black one, that's um, one of the babies that we have. And we did get these pipefish through trawling, I believe, as well. But the smaller they are, they're gonna have that black color. As they start to grow larger into adults, they'll get more of that yellow color that more people are familiar with. So that is a top view of their feeding. So if we go to our next one, I also took a side view of their feeding. And I love, I just love the way their fins move, the way they flutter when they swim. And our pipefish, they do get fed every day. Now you can see there's an, one more pipefish at the bottom and you might be able to see just a bit of the, the fourth one on the right corner. Yeah, and those are our pipefish. So they also have funny shapes. Um, you might've seen um, them before, but those are the pipefish that, uh, like the similar one that I showed you from the beginning that was dried and preserved. And now with that, with our next slide, we can transition into our arts and crafts. So now if you did not already gather some scissors, paper, or a pencil to draw, um, you can go ahead and grab those things. I have things like markers and tape and scissors, but I'm going to be drawing some live birdfish on camera with you today and a puffer so that you can have a little burfish buddy of your own. And we'll just give folks a few seconds to do that while I turn on my different camera so I can draw on camera. Let's see. Let me turn off one of the videos so I can get our webcam video started. In the meantime, I'm going to go back and watch this video just because it's so cool to see them feeding. So we're just going to watch this while we are getting our crafts ready. All right. So now Thank you, Erin, for playing the video. But hopefully everyone has had a little bit of time to gather um, their supplies. But now, if Erin, if you could stop screen sharing and just um, highlight the, uh, the little board that I have. All right. So now hopefully you all have a piece of paper and something to draw with. Um, I am going to draw with a brown marker. And the first thing we're going to draw is going to be our birdfish. So if you could just follow along with me, I'll try and give the best directions I can. Um, but basically, I'm going to try and draw a teardrop kind of shape because I want that to be the body of my fish. So this is going to be the head. 
and this is going to be the tail end. And I don't want it to be too big because um, we're going to draw it so that it looks deflated and inflated. So I want to keep it my burfish first, a little small, a little thin. But now you can kind of see that teardrop. But on this end is where I'm going to draw the tail, and we call that the caudal fin. And I'm going to try and draw it like a big, wide V shape. But I want to make the edges, the way they connect, a little rounder or smoother. Because at least for burfish, their caudal fin isn't so um, angular. I'm going to just draw it around. There we go. So it kind of has a rounded edge. And now I'm going to draw the fin that is on top. Um, and this one is going to be called the dorsal fin. So I want to try and draw that same shape. I want to make it look like a very wide kind of V shape and then have it be rounded when I close it. And again, that's going to be our dorsal fin. And now I'm going to draw the bottom fin, also known as the anal fin. And these fins at the top and bottom, that's what's going to denote our tetradontiforms. So they don't really look as the same as um, something like a mola mola or ocean sunfish, um, but this is what it looks like on birdfish. And now that I have the fins, um, I like to draw lines in my fins just so that I know that they are fins. And you don't have to draw exactly the same amount of lines I do. It's gonna be up to your artistic interpretation. And now that I have the body, I'm going to draw uh, the eye right here. And they have pretty big eyes. So I want one big circle. And then for the burfish, they have a pretty um, big pupil. So I'm going to draw that nice and big. And I didn't really draw um, too big of a prominent mouth, but I'm just going to have it be kind of smiling. So that's kind of, this is going to be a side view of our burfish. So that's going to be its mouth. And now I'm going to draw what we call the pectoral fin. So the fin that goes on the body that you see um, on fish. I think in Finding Nemo, Nemo calls it his, um, his lucky fin. Is his pectoral fin. I'm also going to draw um, some lines in there to denote that they are fins. And then before I draw those spikes, I think it'll be a little easier if I color it first. Um, you can draw them whatever, whatever color you would like. I'm going to draw mine yellow, just because our burfish is kind of a pale, almost yellowish color. Is anyone else drawing with markers? Or for me, that's just the easiest, um, as long as I don't, uh, draw the lines too much on top of each other. I think it's a lot easier and faster than crayons. But if you like drawing with crayons or color pencils, that's okay too. Right now, my burfish is just kind of starting to look like a lemon. But don't worry, we'll be adding in the spikes and other designs in the burfish right after this. It's also okay if you don't color in all of the white in. Because sometimes, you know, with the water and the light and the sun, there's a glare that will kind of bounce off the fish. So I'm going to say some of those, the leftover white that I didn't color in is going to be that glare from the sun or maybe the, the lights on top of the tanks. And I'm not going to color in the, the eyes um, there. The inside of their eyes looked kind of white to me on camera. 
um, as well as the inside of their mouths kind of look white. So I'm just gonna leave those ones white. But now that our fur fish is colored in, now we can start adding some of those fun spikes. Um, so if you remember from the videos, unlike the puffer fish or some of the porcupine fish, these ones will always have spikes. So that means that I'm going to draw spikes on these. So even when they're not inflated, they will always have the spikes because it's a permanent part of their skin. So these are the ones on the top. And now it kind of looks like it has a mohawk, but that's okay. We're gonna draw some more spikes on the side. So I think I'm going to draw just a few rows of these and have the spikes be in between each other. Now it's starting to look more like a burfish. Um, and once again, these are called, the ones we have in our aquarium are striped burfish. So I don't want to forget to draw those stripes. I'm gonna to start to draw some lines. And they don't all have to connect. As you can see, some of them are a little disconnected. They begin in some places and end in others. Their stomachs were pretty bare though, so I'm not gonna draw too many lines there. And what I like about the burfish is that the lines around the mouth and eyes tend to be really short and squiggly. Kind of like that. They're a little more busy than some of the other stripes on the body. But now that I have those spikes, I'm going to color in the top of the spikes. I'm trying my best not to let the yellow bleed into the orange. And some of our burfish also have some dots on them. So I'm not gonna draw dots all over because they're not spotted burfish, but some of our burfish just have a few dots. There we go, it's starting to look more like a burfish. So I want to make it so that this burfish is inflatable and deflatable. So now that we have our full complete burfish, we're going to draw a line from one from the bottom to the other part. So it's going to be rounded as if it's a bigger part of its belly. So I'm going to try and draw that slowly so you can kind of see what I'm trying to show. So we're going to draw this extra right here, this line, and have it connect to the bottom of the anal fin right there. So now it kind of looks like I'm trying to make him 3D, but I'm not. <laughs> He's still going to be 2D on paper. But after you cut this out, um, for the sake of time, I think I won't cut this one out. But once you do cut this one out, where this very first line is from the belly to this other layer, you're going to fold it so that you can unfold and fold the flap. And the end product is going to look something like this. So this is a burfish that I drew before. Um, this one instead has a black or gray color, uh, the line outline instead of brown. But as you can see, this is that line I'm talking about, this line that I drew that I want to be able to fold. So this is the burfish when it's deflated. And this is the burfish inflated. And these spikes are a little smaller. You can draw your spikes as big or as small as you want. But that's our very first uh, burfish craft that we have for you today. I'm gonna show that again. It's deflated and now it's inflated. <laughs> so this is an easy way to learn about burfish. Um, because again, it's always going to have the spikes, but it can inflate or deflate. And now that we have done our burfish, now we're going to do something like another type of pufferfish. So you can grab another piece of paper. It might be a little hard to see with the lighting, but this one is a yellow sheet of paper. So I might not have to color this one all the way in. I'm gonna let the camera refocus. But again, I'm going to use a brown marker to start outlining our puffer fish so that the burfish has a friend. 
Let's see. Sometimes our webcam has problems focusing. But basically, the first thing I'm going to do with the puffer fish, instead of drawing a tear shape or anything that really looks like a fish, I'm just going to draw one circle. Um, I'm not going to have it be too big, maybe a medium sized circle. And it doesn't have to be the most perfect circle in the world. <laughs> um, and before I start drawing in the eyes or the mouth, I'm going to draw something that I'm going to call a slit because this slit that I'm about to draw at the top of the fish is something that we will eventually cut out. So I'm gonna draw the slit right here. I want it to be pretty thick as well. So it kind of looks like a, I'm not drawing a happy face. That's not what this is. <laughs> this is going to be our slit that we cut through. As I get the camera to refocus. But now that I have that slit, now I can try and guess um, where I want to put the eyes. So I'm going to put the eyes kind of at the, the right under um, the end of both sides of the line. So one right here. And one right here. Now it looks like an upside down smiley face, but that's not what it will look like in the end, I promise you. Um, but these are its eyes. And then because I want to draw my puffer fish puffed up, I'm going to have its mouth be closed. So this is going to represent its mouth eventually. But I'm going to start to color in the eyes. I'm going to color most of them, most of the eyes in. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of that top left open. You can draw the eyes however you want. Um, so I don't want my eyes to look scary. So I'm just going to draw them and color them in and just have a little bit of the white left over. So it looks a little more cartoonish than it does realistic. And now um, this third circle that I drew here, the mouth, I'm going to try and draw its lips. And I have one line right there, and then I'm going to draw one circle. And then one more line, because I want it to look like it's beak. <laughs> now, now it looks like um, a face with a very big brow right here. But just keep ignoring this. Um, that's somewhere where we're going to eventually cut out. But now that we have that, we can draw some, some spikes. I want our puffer to be puffed up, so I'm going to draw the spikes all along its face. You can make the spikes as big or as small as you would like. On things like the northern puffer, they're pretty small. But on other puffer fish, um, the spikes can be pretty big. The spikes are really big on the porcupine fish that we saw earlier. So those are the spikes on the face. But right now, this just looks like a circle. So we're going to also draw um, the caudal fin, which is once again the tail. So I kind of want it to stick out from the side. I'm going to draw the tail on this side. So I want it to be a little angled, but I still want the tail to be rounded so that it looks more natural like a fish. So I just like to draw the lines of the tails first, and then I always have them. I always draw the connection after. So I want them a little rounded. I don't want them to look just like a rectangle. It's a little round like that. <laughs> and now I'm going to draw the lines on the caudal fin so that I know that this is a tail. But again, it could be up to your interpretation. Um, and then I'm going to draw. Um, two little front um, fins right here that kind of look like their little hands or arms. Because they are inflated, so it can be hard to see the rest of their body. But these are more of their, um, what we call pectoral fins. If the pectoral fins, the ones on the side of the body, were just sticking out because it is puffed up. It's a funny looking tail. Um, and now that we have our puffer, we can, 
we're going to cut this out. So cutting this out might be a little hard. I try and fold the paper and cut it, um, which I'll show you, but you might need to ask help from an adult or a guardian. Um, so I folded my puffer fish in half, as you can see. Um, but I'm going to try and start to cut um, that line so that both sides end up getting cut equally. So that when I flip op open the paper, I now have that slit, as you can see. I cut that through. Um, so for the sake of time, I don't think I'm gonna cut the puffer fish all the way, but that is the easy way of cutting um, this slit out. And that is because I will show you my different puffer that is already completed and cut out. So when your puffer fish is ready and completed, it will have uh, the slit, as you can see. And then you're going to want to draw spike that will go in your slit. So my spikes, they kind of look like half of a sun. Um, but you want to try and get the spikes to fit through your slit. And the best way I came up with that is that after you cut this out and you just have uh, your puffer fish, um, I will open that slit. And then what I did when I opened the slit was trace the inside of the slit so that I know how big to make my spikes and slit. And after you have that slit, then I drew the spike that go at the top of the puffer. And then I colored it in and cut them out. And that's how I got these spikes. Because now that you have your spikes, you cut open your slit on the puffer fish. You'll be able to just slide in your spikes. As so. I know I'm really zoomed in, but you'll be able to take your spikes in and out. Because it's going to be puffed up and sometimes it won't be puffed up, it'll be deflated. And then you can hide your spikes or slip your spikes back in. So if you've ever had one of those pop-up books where you slide some pictures in and out, that's exactly what this puffer fish is trying to do. I hope you can all see um, the spikes lighting in or out. And now we have our puffer fish and we have our burr fish. So these are your burr fish and buddies, arts and crafts. So you can have your own little burr fish buddies at home. And with that, does anyone have any last questions? So Aaron, if we could go back to our PowerPoint for our final Q&A. Does anyone have any questions about any of the animals we saw today or our arts and crafts? If maybe the craft was a little too fast for you, we will be sending a recording of this video so you can watch me draw them again and draw them with me. And I would love if anyone drew any crafts, if you would send us a photo of the craft you made. I'm really curious to see how anyone else's burr fish or puffer fish came out. Erin, do we have any questions? Yeah, um, we just got one. Um, are cowfish aggressive? <laughs> Um, I don't think cowfish are very aggressive, at least from what I've seen, um, since they eat a lot of algae um, off rocks. They tend to be pretty cute. Um, but if there's a smaller fish that's bothering them, um, they will try and swim near it just so that as like a little warning, like you're in my space, uh, give me some space. Um, but they're not too overly aggressive. Um, they're not going to be as aggressive as I think our trigger fish is. Um, I think our trigger fish is aggressive because again, it has that teeth and it knows it can defend itself very well.
right. And if that is all the questions, then I will turn it back to you, Aaron. Awesome. All right. To conclude, I want to thank our friends of the aquarium who are watching as your support allows us to get new filming equipment and otherwise supports the education work that we do. Um, if you're interested in becoming a friend, uh, there's more information on our website. Um, also, to stay connected with us, uh, we have social media. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, so follow us along to see what's going on with UJ Marine Extension and Georgia Sea Grant. Um, besides that, thank you for coming to this program. It was awesome, Melissa. So thank you, Melissa. Um, and I'm going to say have a good day.